And I'm Dave. And we're new RVers and we're enjoying sharing our journeys and experiences along the way. We're both outdoor adventurists, I'm a nature photographer, we're dog parents, and we love the freedom and flexibility RV travels have given us. We recently bought Tab 400 Boondock by New Camp late last year. And when we purchased it and we were driving home, there was one tiny cloud looming ahead for us and that was backing up. And I'm not talking about backing up our files to the cloud. I'm talking about backing up our trailer. Clever. <laughs> yes, uh, backing up the trailer. Nothing more stressful than backing up that trailer for the first time, second time, third time, whatever. So pulling into a campground as a travel partner, you can be part of the problem or part of the solution. And we've come up with a system that will make you part of the solution. And if he could do that more at home, we would be... Yes, honey. <laughs> Very yes, good. Honey. Very good. If you're a newbie, backing up a trailer is and feels complex. Or if you're a seasoned RVer, but you've got a partner who's hesitant to back up the trailer, <laughs> this video will offer some steps that'll make it easier. So today we're going to be sharing our one, two, three step approach in backing up the trailer. Our first attempt at backing up the trailer, while laughable now, <laughs> sort of, was anything but laughable in the moment. It was filled with... Sheeny, you're jackknifing it. Come on. Right, Sheeny, right. No, no, I meant the other way. Left, Sheen, left. Sheeny, turn your wheels right. The other right. So from the driver's standpoint, what you just heard was that I had one seasoned driver who knew how to back up a trailer, giving me instructions using his framework. Then I had a unseasoned partner also offering his two cents. And it sounded like utter chaos. It didn't make sense to me as the driver. And then from Dave's standpoint, it made sense. I had it perfectly figured out what you needed to do. <laughs> <laughs> and did it work? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to be sharing with you is a one, two, three approach that actually puts everyone on the same page using the same terms and the same signals. So our one, two, three approach includes one, where you put your hands on the wheel, two, the terms that we use to communicate, and three, the signals. These three steps included where we place our hands, in this case, at the bottom of the wheel or at six o'clock. Then it was elimination of the term right and left, and we replaced it with driver side and passenger side. And then lastly, the use of hand signals from the person behind the trailer who's helping guide the driver, with one being driver side and two being passenger side. So Dave is using hand signals to indicate which direction the back of the trailer should go. One means it goes towards the driver's side, and then two means that the trailer will be going towards the passenger side, one and two. As the driver, we're going to put our hands at the base of the wheel at the six o'clock position. When we want to move the back of the trailer towards the driver's side, we're going to take our hand on the driver's side and we're going to rotate the steering wheel up. The rear of the trailer will point towards the driver's side. So here we are getting ready to back up. I can see that my partner needs to have the rear of the trailer move to the driver's side. So I put up the number one and you can see the trailer is moving in that direction. So it's a process of adjust, slight adjustments because it doesn't take much of a turn of the wheel and it will really start to correct itself. To move the back of the trailer towards the passenger side, you put your hand on the passenger side of the wheel and rotate up. I just gave my partner the signal for two which means the rear of the trailer needs to go to the passenger side. The adjustment has been made, and keep in mind, adjustments can be small, and sometimes they have to be a bigger adjustment depending on the space that you're dealing with. 
As simple as the three-step sound, it takes practice, a lot of practice. And whether you use this approach or you come up with an approach that works for you and your partner that's different, the number one thing to do is to take your, your trailer out and go practice in a parking lot. Practice, practice, practice. In fact, we did it how many times and how many hours? Yeah, you know, probably two hours, multiple times. And the thing to remember, get to a place where, you know, the pressure is off. Don't add any more pressure to, to the situation. Get to an empty, a big empty parking lot where you're, you're absolutely you're not going to back into something unless you're just not paying attention, period. And so take your time, find some space, reduce the stress right away, and just have fun practicing. And speaking of practicing, it's not just practicing backing up. It's actually practicing backing up and then going forward because you may need to course correct. There are many occasions where we're parking and we don't like the position or maybe we've gone too far to the driver's side or gone too far to the passenger side that really we just need to pull forward, straighten up, get out of the car, go back and look just to get a, our view of what's going on and then getting back in and course correcting where we need to go. So why is this important? Well, one, for starters, we buy RVs to go camping and we want to have the flexibility of going where we want to go versus relying only on locations that have easy to park or pull through sites. And you know, some people ask, well, why don't you use technology and walkie talkies or a backup camera? The first thing is that we really felt like we needed to understand how to do it because sometimes technology fails. So we always have to be able to rely on our driving skills to be able to navigate parking. Both partners really need to know how to back the trailer up. It brings confidence knowing that your partner has your back if some emergency situation mm -hmm. would occur. And these things do happen occasionally. So you don't want to be out there um, stranded, um, not sure what to do, in a hurry, and you're just not confident in what you need to do. So the one-two driver-passenger approach may work for you or it may not. The key really is to have a technique and a communication system between you and your partner that you both agree on so you're operating off the same page. Yes, uh, communication is the key to reducing stress and it is going to be stress involved when you're backing up, especially early on uh, until you get real comfortable doing it. So having your communication agreed upon is a, a key. And sometimes when you're backing up, it's okay to pull forward, straighten out and start again. A lot of times that's what it takes as you're beginning. And, uh, Feel free to do that because I've, that's how we, we, we did it and it's, it works. And saying three or four times is kind. Initially, there were situations where it took seven, eight, nine, ten times of pulling forwards and backwards to getting it lined up the way that it needed to be lined up for where we were parking. The other side of that is in addition to practicing and pulling forward is getting out and looking. If what your partner is saying doesn't match up with what you're seeing, you have a different vantage point. Put it in park, step out of the car, go back and look. In fact, even offer suggestions, communicate with your partner to say, hey, this would be helpful um, as you're navigating this in because you saw something different as the person driving. Just remember, that you as the driver are the one that's calling the shots and you're the one that's in charge. That's right? why you're always wanting to drive. <laughs> now it makes sense. Okay. Oh, well, hey, thanks for tuning in. I don't know about you, but it's camping time and I'm ready to hit the road. Uh, before we do, I hope you subscribe and check in for our upcoming videos on camping, camping meals. Got some good treats that are very easy to do as well as some photography tips along the way. Until then, happy camping, stay safe, and stay tuned.